the pirates. All right, gentlemen. I hope you've all done your homework because it's time to brainstorm. I wanted two targets and projects from each of you. Overlap will determine priority. Now how are we conquering this world? Miles asks the round table of all the men. Toss your folder in so everyone can take a look. I'll just get mine over with. We need to blow the old tunnels on the north-northeastern archipelago, the one kind of shaped like a thumbs up. There's rumors of some kind of monsters nesting in there. We need to get rid of either them or their home. So that's target one from me. The project will be surveying the mess after we do that to see if they can be used as a bolt hole or still have anything worth digging for, Jean-Luc says, throwing a folder onto the table. After that, there's some gang knocking over the local booze transports. It's just dirty water, really, but the girls like that stuff. So we need to bust some heads. After that, we reimburse and help out the bars, and we get a lot of people on our side. Not bad. Very well thought out, Gene, Victor notes before clearing his throat. There's also the obvious. We need to get our hands on, or at least in contact with the ambassador of this world. The more official our reign over Vuxa 5 is, the less hassle we have to deal with if we accidentally become more important. Shit, that's one of mine. Marcus remarks, glancing at his folder with a grin. Same. Ryu admits with a chuckle. Yeah, Lou adds. Guess we know what one of our top priorities is then. My second project would be to get control of or launch some early warning satellites in the system. Figure out what's on the market and get something efficient, but not over the top. Too much glitz will bring in the sticky-fingered types. That's us, Victor. We're pirates. Miles says, amused. We're more scoundrel pirates than thieving pirates. Victor returns. We've literally stolen an entire palace and spaceport, Miles says. We're in the process of stealing a planet. He continues. Exactly. Name a common thief that does that kind of stunt. Anyways, my two targets are a pair of local airbike gangs. We need to get our boots on their necks or bury them. They're causing a lot of damage and have killed the few sheriffs this place has had in the past. Those are the Victor plans, he says, tossing his folder into the center of the table. Speaking of sheriffs, we need to get a few officers of some kind to at least give us the air of legitimacy. Sheriffs my bet for what would work the best, Marcus says, holding his folder up. I agree we need to contact our ambassador to Centris, a Miss Vooney, Luxed. We get her on our side and a lot of problems fade away. My targets are a pair of mines not far from that one Jean-Luc mentioned. That small cluster seems to be the stinking armpit of the planet as there's supposedly slave labor there. We pop the heads of the bosses and offer transport to wherever for the girls in those pits want to go, and we get mines, goodwill, and some competition knocked clean out. Anyone also considering the mines? Miles asks and smiles at the lack of response. All right, Lou, then, Ryu. Ambassador first, second is a shanty town. We help them put actual roofs over their heads not made of junk and they'll love us. They also have a local drug lord leaning hard on them and rumors of a serial killer there. We smoke out and smoke them both and we have a small town on our side. Lou remarks, placing his folder in the middle of the table, and Ryu nods. There are several of those, including a series of run-down fishing villages. Two large groups of local gangs have been stealing their boats and waging war on the water. We crush both gangs and return the boats to them and the towns can start picking themselves up. That'll give us another few towns on our team in return for a single night of violence. A lot of people to mow through, though, Ryu explains before putting his folder onto the table. I'll go next. I've lived in ghettos pulled myself out of them so I can safely say that schools and places for teens to be together and safe will win us the hearts and minds of this world. There's a gang called the Breaks that we'll need to crush before any renewal gets off the ground. There are also a couple local pimps that are aggressive recruiters and quick on the kill. Apparently, there's an axiom style that lets them knock someone out with a poke. Frank, I assume you'll be good for taking them out. Jake explains, putting his folder onto the pile. 
Franklin nods as he considers things. After all, most of his Axiom fights had been him getting the drop on someone and blitzing them with unexpected abilities. An aware and skilled opponent would be quite the change of pace. My suggestion is also about urban renewal. The planet has little in the way of proper hospitals, mostly back alley doctors and nurses. Renewing those in the major urban centers will take more than two bits of effort. The supply lines are also pretty important, so I'm considering this as a multiple part thing. Also, the doctors will need more training and supplies and Beck considers as he places his folder into the center of the table. It counts as two. What are the targets? Miles asks. There's an organ harvesting operation. It needs to die. They pay a small group of criminals to kidnap their victims. They need to die as well, Beck says, and there are nods. This is all well and good, but we're all missing something. There is nothing we can build that will last if we don't get a proper logistics network up, public transportation, proper laneways registered. Everything will fail unless we can get ways to get everything we need where we need it. Roads are the veins of a city, and highways are the veins of a world. After that, we need to get the markets moving, safe places where trade can happen, and people can start trading what they have for what they need and what they want. Be they bazaars, marketplaces, malls, trading halls, or whatever you want to call them. For that, we need to slam down on the small-time Sky Raiders and the jackasses that thieve all over the place. Take out those targets and we'll have an easier time pulling Vuxa out of its endless depression. Sai explains before holding up his folder and then placing it on the table. On the bigger picture, I have my own ideas. The planetary and galactic communication relays are either a hair's breadth from failure or already rotting husks. They need repair, and we need to get people trained with the skills to keep things repaired. Blue-collar stuff like carpenters, welders, electricians, plumbers, that sort of thing. As for my targets, I found out that there are a couple of small-time adepts using their axiom to do all sorts of heinous things. I, I have the details in the folder, but I don't like to think about it. There may be some mercy kills in the near future. Franklin explains, sliding his to the center with a sigh. How bad? Miles asks, and Franklin looks away. Commander Smith. Mass graves bad, he says softly. More, Miles says with a cross look. One has a fetish for cutting and putting things back together. The other likes how things dance with electricity. Neither cares about the suffering of others. Franklin says softly. We're going to need to snipe or assassinate them. A knife in the dark. Maybe a bullet from the heavens. Either way, they need to be taken out fast and unexpectedly. You're going after these two yourself if we don't kill them first, aren't you? Miles asks him, and he nods. They're yours. Plan it well and don't get killed. Franklin nods silently. All right. First off, gentlemen, we need to get some backup. I've sent out a call to the Chainbreaker. They're doing this for loot rights and gas. My targets are the Scorchin family and the lean criminal clan. They were the Vikas' main competition. After the three main families, the world opens up for proper renewal. So we need to pop them. After that, we need to get a defense fleet up and a way to produce them. It wouldn't do for distant relatives of these people to come for their pound of flesh. I'm talking ground to orbit defenses. I'm talking short range gunboats and magnetic mines. Miles explains and holds up his file. You're suggesting that we might end up facing full on military grade threats? Victor asks curiously. PMCs are a thing even out here. I did a bit of digging and there are five companies in just a week's travel that could be hired to show up and start cooking us with capital scale lasers. And don't let the ground performance fool you. In space laser is king and plasma is queen because without atmosphere in the way they don't dissipate on ranges shorter than a solar system. You can't dodge a laser and the defenses against those straight up melt in front of plasma. Sure, one of our shells could shatter a ship's hull, but they're as easy to dodge as the plasma when spotted and require a lot more space for the ammo, he continues. And that's if we're not dodging assassins. 
We need to get the people on this world on our side a thousand percent. Humanity's newness to the galaxy will play to our favor, as will the fact that they tend to treat men with a soft touch. But we're ten guys in a crew of hundreds. We're a small target compared to the girls, more a prize to take from the girls if we're being honest, Franklin says. The girls are talking about fortifying this area. They've got good ideas, but a siege will starve us out. Victor adds, All the more reason to get this entire world revived, Miles says calmly, meaning we need to put all of these into effect about last week or so. I'll get started on mine then. Those freaks need to die, and the sooner they're in the ground, the less damage they cause, Franklin says, rising up from his seat and walking to the exit. You're not dismissed yet, soldier. Get back here. Miles says, and Franklin turns back to fix him with a look. Sit down and shut up. Now is not the time for stupid bravado or revenge quests. Yes, the monsters will die, but not in a screaming fit of rage that gets someone important killed. Franklin sits back down, but doesn't say anything. Christ, Franklin, we don't have a shrink here. Don't go nuts about this. They will die. Take comfort in it and let it go. Miles orders him. Why does it matter to you anyways? Jean-Luc asks. No, really. You're seriously pissed and holding it in hard. Why does it matter so much? There are a hundred different ways those freaks could indulge their fucking fetishes and they have to do it in a way I get, in a way that makes sense to me and is even beautiful to me. It's foul. It's wrong. It's... You're projecting. Let it go. The closest you've come to torturing someone ended up seducing the woman so hard she's literally moved in with you. Knives are used for all kinds of heinous things and you don't see any of us shying away from butter knives or bayonets, Victor says, and Franklin takes a deep breath and exhales hard. Fine. Calm. So long as the bad guys get got then, it's good. You're right. Not time to indulge. We've got a planet to fix invasions to prepare for and more. Franklin agrees. The chain breaker and her squad have proven to be monsters in a fight. We get them in to help with all the death and we get everyone we can find that's hungry for a better tomorrow and give them all the info, tools, and supplies they need. They'll do the rest and thank us for it, Marcus says. Speaking of information, we could use some pointers from them. We've likely picked up some bad habits from the girls and need a smack to the back of the head or three. Beck notes.